All right, see if I can do something messing you up too much. We got a LS XR4145, and we're gonna be changing our crank sensor. Now, the way we know it's our crank sensor, we pulled some codes off of it. Um, this F02636, I believe is the code was going after, but with the code scanner, I think I ended up eventually pulling a P0371, which would be like a extra signal timing or advanced timing, something like that. We got our uh, trouble chart from LS to go through and we actually put a scope if this wind will cooperate. But with our scope on our crank sensor, you can see you're supposed to have a pickup every so many so many spaces but this one right here is an extra one so for whatever reason that crank sensor is either not picking the wheel up or it's picking an extra wheel up so it's reading wrong but we checked our powers or grounds our data everything is showing for it to be the sensor the uh the dealership says oh it's going to be the sensor so let's change the sensor now the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna pull our starter out of the way. It's got two 14 millimeter nuts holding it on. There's one there and then one right down there. Set something on the paper so she don't leave us. And then if you'll look right where that bolt is, that is gonna be your crank sensor. So let me get some brake clean and clean around that. I believe it's gonna be a 10 millimeter maybe and we'll get that pulled out. All right, so we've got our 10 millimeter bolt out. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick a screwdriver and we're gonna pry just, just like that, just to kind of break it loose. Try to look on the screen, it's messing me up, y'all. Put it right here on this top side. Yeah. So we just wanna make sure she's broke loose, then we're gonna reach in and see if we can pull it out. Probably have to twist and pull. And there she is. Now, obviously, we've got our connector undone. And I believe you would think there's supposed to be an o ring on this. So, we're going to double check and make sure we don't have an o ring sitting right down in there. But there's our old sensor, and there's our new sensor. And this is what I was curious about. The the redesign on it. So if you'll look, we were not having this problem all the time and it progressively got worse. But if you'll see how thin this tab is, and then look how thick this tab is. My guess with it not picking up all the time is we were having a problem with our interference uh, or even call it the distance between the sensor and the pickup wheel. And I have a feeling, especially with it having some rust behind it or whatever, if the sensor got pushed back just a hair, it was enough to every now and then cause it to not pick up one of the wheels or one of the teeth on the wheel, giving us our problem. And that would make sense why our new tab is three times as thick. Hopefully y'all can see that on camera. But uh but yeah, I mean, big difference there. So this one does have an O-ring on it right there. We'll get a pick and we'll make sure we get that off. Now, I don't know if this will help y'all or not, but here is the part number for what I have for this specific tractor. We gave them the uh, serial number, chassis number, and all that good stuff, and this is what we got. It appears to be correct. So let me clean up that O-ring and we'll get started putting it back together. All right, so we put a little bit of oil, clean engine oil on the O-ring, put the sensor in, tighten up our bolt. Now, you want to put your connector together right here. And there is a, uh, a tab on the back of it, a clip, that will actually clip into a bracket and hold that out of the way. So make sure you do that. Keep that wire from vibrating against the starter too much. Now we're going to try to set the starter back up in here with just one hand. Let's see if I can do it without messing y'all up too much. I may have to set the camera down. I think I'm going to, so we'll do that. All right, so set the camera down. Boom, starter goes right on. So 
just wiggle your starter back up on there. Now, you'll have two nuts, two lock washers. So your lock washer will go on first, and then your nut, obviously. So down here on the bottom, I can do this without messing y'all up too much. Get her started. This focus is messing y'all up. Apologize for that. Now this top one, this one is a little bit aggravating. I'm gonna set the camera down so I can pick that starter up to give me a little bit more room. All right, so there she is. I bolted up quick, simple, and easy. Like I said, this is what I used. Um, the bottom, pretty easy. You just slide it up on there. Boom, there it is. Now the top side, it's a little bit more difficult. You can get this. Oh, let me show you. All. You can get this back in there like that on there but you had a pretty good angle so I ended up taking the wobbler off I ended up taking the wobbler off and I just had to work this back back behind all the wires and stuff to get back in there you could use an extension that's a little bit shorter because I was pretty pretty tight to bend up against this pump right here but uh but yeah that's it so now that we've got all that bolted back up what we'll do is we'll go in with our scanner you can remove this lower cover right here. I believe it's Phillips heads on both sides. And you've got an OBD2 port. We've actually got one of these little bad boys. A little launch scanner. Now, this is what I'm going to be using to clear our codes. You can probably unhook the battery and do the same thing. I don't know. Um, I was pretty surprised. This is a cheaper, cheaper scanner. It's probably four or five hundred bucks. And it's just my favorite go-to scanner for a bunch of junk but it actually will scan these tractors in obd1 mode so that is that is pretty useful because ls a scanner i think it's like 200 bucks or something for another 200 bucks you can get one that you can actually use on your personal vehicles because i'm going to assume if you're working on your own tractor you probably work on your own trucks cars all that good stuff i will put a link to this in the description for any of any of those of you that are interested so you can check it out but yeah let me get this tightened up double check everything and we will clear it and see what she's doing hopefully the wind's not too much for you but you can see we got this cover off we've got our obd2 dongle hooked up now we'll come into our scanner we're gonna go into obd1 obd2 choose that version Scanner's gonna do its thing. It's searching. And we do have the key on on the tractor. It might have to be running, but I don't think so. Uh, so DTCs, scanner. So we can go to read fault code. We'll do generic. There we go. The P0371 is the one we was going after. Now we do have the particulate filter. Our uh, exhaust pressure sensors acted funky. So we're going to back out of that. And then we're going to clear fault codes. Alright, so now let's, uh, let's crank her up and see what she's doing. Now before this, it would go into limp mode and it would throw up the little red explanation mark of death so and you couldn't idle it the idle was stuck so let's uh let's see what we got all right so she seems to be smooth and we've got idle we've got throttle So I, I believe that's going to have her fixed. Now, before 
this problem got to where it was shutting the tractor down, it would actually just have a miss to it. So you would bump your throttle up, and here and there it would just be kind of missing. And uh, they chased it and chased it and chased it, which the um, the scope doesn't lie. It showed us having an issue with our crank sensor. We changed it. She's fixed. Hopefully this will help you out. So there again, you remove this cover, OBD2 port, and you can use one of these fancy scanners to uh, scan your vehicles and your tractor these days. Hopefully this helps y'all. Super easy job. Anybody can do it. And uh, hopefully this will help you diagnose it properly the first time and save you some time and money. If you enjoyed it, if it helped you, let me know in the comments. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, y'all have a good evening.